Hello, my fellow intrinsically altruistic alt accounts. I'm Mr. Church. Today, we're going to be looking at 12 essential camp building items by order of importance. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to include six useful items. Number one, the flamethrower trap. Now, I use this in almost every build on the channel. Uh, when you walk up to it and hit trigger, it triggers the flamethrower trap, kind of like I feel triggered right now. Or... You can just power it up with a generator, and it bursts forth Righteous Flame. And this you can use to destroy your camp items when you have some rage inside you. To get this plan, it is an in-game item. Uh, you will have to do 7,000 quest lines, but it's just going to take a couple hours or days. So you go to Abby's Bunker, and that will start the quest Early Warnings. Now, in order to complete Early Warnings, you will have to finish the quest Missing Link, which is a Rose quest, Gain Her Trust. Now to gain her trust, all you have to do is Signal Strength, Flavors of Mayhem, Key to the Past, no biggie. You know, it'll don't just take you the rest of your day. And then, after that, you can do Early Warnings, Reassembly Required, and finally coming to fruition. Thank you. And then it's a guaranteed drop from that quest. So as simple as that, you get the flamethrower trap, the Tesla arc trap. Those are both cool plans to have. Uh, and it's worth doing, even though it takes you a week and a half, because you'll be able to build it in all your camps as well as build it in workshops. You can't have a friend build it for you if you want, uh, but you won't be able to mess around with it in like workshops and stuff. And just to clarify... The flamethrower trap is not the same as the flamer trap. This is for the flamer weapon. That is a, a plan you can find on Graham and on uh, some other vendors in the game. Just to clarify the difference there so you don't like, you know, think you saw it and when you didn't. Now, one of the great things about the flamer trap is that you can destroy your own camp building items. Um, and that's fun for when you're angry and frustrated, but also it, it allows you to remove or to change the collision on items. Because some items, they turn yellow uh, and the collision stays the same. But some items, they have a completely different collision texture like walls. And this allows you to double wall half walls, for example. And you can also use it to intersect certain items, even if they do still have that yellow collision texture. Uh, it will allow you to intersect. Roofs, for example, are really uh, very pliable when they're destroyed. So you can do stuff like uh, changing the texture on that. Um, so that's one of the many things you can do with them. You can also use it to destroy your items to... to have the destroyed texture be what's in your camp. Um, and so that's uh, another fun thing. So there's different items that have a really cool texture when they're destroyed. Like this truck, uh, this door, for example, um, has a really cool destroyed texture. And a lot of prefabs have really, really cool destroyed textures. And we're going to talk about destroyed prefabs later in the video. Um, but as you can see, it's useful to be able to destroy your own items in your camp for those reasons. Now, if you're in free cam mode, you can use a generator to power it up. Instead of leaving free cam mode, walking over to it, hitting trigger. Uh, even though I know you love pushing those buttons, it's going to be okay if you don't. Um, sometimes therapy can be useful, and I mean that for anybody. Now, one of the things you can do with the flame trap is destroy items that have items on top of them. Now, in the game, when this happens, the item on top will actually disappear. It, do it has zero collision. It doesn't have a destroyed texture. It still is there, and it's just in the void. This allows you to overlap items, so you're merging them, but not in the traditional sense. And you can do a lot of really awesome things using this mechanic uh, that you couldn't do uh, otherwise. So, because of that, I was able to get that safe right through there. This is a horrible example. Um, but you can you can do really wacky merges using that mechanic of destroying the item on the bottom. Now, number two on the list of essential items is the catwalks. There's the normal, uh, there's this alien catwalk, and there's also the normal white catwalk. They both function exactly the same way, um, and they're both atom shop items. Um, now, the one of the big reasons why catwalks are so valuable and unique is they don't carry 
support. And when I say this, what I mean is items that require support uh, usually carry support through them to other items that need support down to wherever that support is. So if we're looking at this side over here, this stair is being carried by this upper floor and then this stair and it goes down to the foundation, which is the support. And that means we won't be able to destroy the middle floor because that's the support of this stair. It won't let you. It's It says it would be an unaccessible. But because catwalks don't carry support, this staircase never had support. So you can get rid of that catwalk and leave the free floating stair. And this opens up so many possibilities when building because the game has these horrific restrictions that it shouldn't have in the first place. And again, it, it's the same with walls as well. Uh, you could, of course, destroy walls or make them be doorways to get them to float. But normally, uh, you won't be able to just delete something that's holding up a, a wall uh, without something special happening. Now, this allows us to make uh, blueprints because it does allow you to snap items to it. Um, so it's like a temporary support in the moment. But as soon as it's placed, it no longer is supporting it. So you can get rid of the catwalk, leaving whatever is, you know, it was that behind, whether it be a stair or a wall. And I have a whole video on blueprints if you want to check this out and learn how to make this and learn the mechanics more on that. But the second thing that uh, catwalks do that nothing else in the game does is it has something called downward support. At least I call it that. I don't know what you guys want to call it. What do you want to call it? You know, I'm open to suggestions. What do you want to call it? Viscerally uninterrupted downward spirals? That's something else. Now, roofs actually used to have downward support, and so did upper floors. I believe they still do in Fallout 4, um, but they don't anymore. And those that was a really uh, helpful way of getting walls into places where you couldn't get a foundation underneath. Uh, you could kind of, you know, kind of walk over there with the, with the roofs and snap down. Well, now you can do that with catwalks. You can get walls into place where you used to not be able to. And because you can downward snap, you, it's really easy to make underpinnings. Not like that, <laughs> I messed up. Uh, but like this, you can snap downward, and then of course you can wallpaper it, it's pretty simple. I think Stole Your Sweet Roll was the first person that I saw doing this a long time ago. And finally, the last thing that catwalks are really good for is spacing foundations. So if you're making a complicated build, um, and you want the foundations to all be at the exact same height, but you want them, to, you know, to be separated. Uh, you can have them a quarter of a foundation apart, a half, a three quarters, and or even a full foundation apart, and it's super simple. So to recap, the normal catwalk and the alien catwalk is number two. If you only get one atom shop item in the game, get the catwalks. Number three is actually an in-game plan called Advanced Power Connectors, and it's so you can get this pressure plate. But it also comes with these conduits, which are also super, super uh, nice to use um, for a lot of different reasons. They do have a little bit of a floating technique and a little bit of a, you know, there's, there's small uh, pipes and items. Uh, but the main thing here is the pressure plate. Now, when you pick up a pressure plate and put it back down, um, when you first build it, the button on it sticks down. Now, you can use this to do something called the drop merge. Um, and you're not actually drop merging, you're actually pushing the bottom item up into the top item. So if you look here, you can see there's a little gap, and that's where the button travels. That's the travel distance of the button. So when you take the stack of items and you go to place it down, it initially wants to stick down to where the top of the surface is. But then when you hit place, it goes up to where that button travels from so that you know it can be on top of that button when it's pushed up this pushes the bottom item up into the top item so it's not actually dropping the top item down it's pushing the bottom item up and this is called the drop merge and uh, nuka violet actually has a really great tutorial video on merges that i'm going to link in the description as well that you should definitely check out if you're interested in learning more about merging another way that you can get the button to push down is using a mannequin, uh, if you don't want it to stand on it, of course, because mannequins are classed as NPCs in the game. Um, 
and so it's also a good way to fix it because if someone steps on your pressure plate it will pick it up and then uh it won't be down again but a mannequin will fix it you can also just store it replace it and move it again um, but a mannequin will fix it and keep it pushed down number four is really basic and that's just rugs and i mean rugs of any kind but specifically the more plain and the thinner rugs are best um, now rugs are useful in a lot of ways and it's easy to overlook something so basic but they are really a very essential item for camp building in a lot of different ways you know i kind of consider them like uh an essential in like a really boring way like you can make free place walls without a rug but you wouldn't be able to make this one with that with that rug underneath which allows you to place them on top of foundations um so there's a lot of small things that rugs do um you can also use them to you could pile stuff up on a carpet and you could take the carpet and shove it under a shelf and all that stuff would go under the shelves uh and that's because this the rug will actually go under the shelf and you can also make floors with rugs really simply um and i do that a couple times later in this video um, and you can also use them to cover holes in your roof, in your floor. They're just a really great tool for all uses. Now, number five is an in-game plan. It's actually two different plans. You can get either one, and this is a place where you can get them, but you can find them in a lot of different vendors, and that is actually the brick building set and the metal building set. Um, the brick building set and the metal building set is again an easy thing to overlook when I was trying to think of essential items for building. But as we talked about um, destroyed walls having a different collision, when it comes to top arches, they actually have the yellow, or actually in this case black I guess, because we don't need to worry about graphics in the game, um, texture instead of having a destroyed texture. And these uh, make it so that most top arches will intersect with each other instead of being able to double them. Now the brick wall and the metal wall are different in that regard because they actually do have a destroyed texture instead of just being a yellow blob. Um, so these, and again that's why you don't need both of them, you can get one or the other. Uh, and both of these will work, they'll work interchangeably and you will be able to put a top arch from one to the other, and it'll be perfect for your life. Your life will be better in many different ways. Uh, so if you're wanting to double wall, uh, you make sure you have at least one of these two items, and that's why I included them on the essential items list. Um, and also, the brick wall set is the strongest wall set in the game as well. So if your buildings are getting destroyed a lot, uh, consider building it out of brick, and you will find that it's actually uh, going to sustain a lot more damage. So yes, number five is, I declare, uh, the metal wall set and the brick wall set for these top arches. Number six is actually a group of items, which I'm calling the underground group. And so there's three uh, atom shop or scoreboard items, and three in-game items here. There's a couple more, um, but the symptomatic is, as you can see, an in-game item, and I don't actually have it unlocked on this character because this is my mule character, but it is pretty simple to get. Uh, if it has this little lock icon, that means an, it's an in-game item you don't know, and if it has a red atom symbol, that's an that's an atom shop or scoreboard item that you don't know. Uh, this one you can get do uh, the daily ops to get it, and you can also find it in player vendors or have someone build it for you in your camp. Um, otherwise, there's these three items here, which are all Atom Shop, I believe. You have the Alien Stasis Chamber, the Spore Plant, and the Iron Maiden. The reason why these are good is they allow you to get underneath the map in a very easy way. That also allows you to move your entrance to under the map around. And I also got this from Stole You Sweet Roll a couple of years ago, actually. And I'm not sure who the first person to do this specific way is, uh, but he is the first person that I saw doing it. Now, when you use this uh, 
this uh, combination of items like this, you can drop merge this down. And remember, it pushes the bottom most item up. So it'll push it up through those other two items. And what you'll be left with is the rug on the top, which is your basis that everything else is standing on in quotation marks. And then the you just leave the, the bed, the spore plant or whatever it is. Uh, just visible by a little bit so that you can interact with it still. So you can use any tall item that you can interact with uh, for this method. Um, so you just interact with it, it'll put you underneath the map. And even if you don't want to build under the map, it's really great to be able to get under there if you get something stuck or you want to mess around with something. Sometimes you can build upward under the map to get like underpinnings in or walls in that won't snap down into the ground very far and it's super simple you can move the rug around so you can get at different parts of underneath the map without building a big complex scaffolding network which is what you had to do when you use these other items which is the base and you can also use the my personal terminal which i believe is a free item that everybody can get um that i forgot to list um but i'll put a picture up on the screen so you know what i'm talking about and uh but you can put those on the stairs and this is the original way that i first learned how to get under the map and i did learn it from someone that i used to play with who unfortunately uh fell to the dark one the evil beast the devil himself and there was much uh possession that happened um hope he's doing well so to recap we have the three items on the left which are scoreboard slash atom shop and the three items on the right which are in-game items, and there's probably a lot of other items you could use uh, as long as it's tall and interactable. Number seven is the floating group. Now, I put this in essential items. Not everybody is going to use this method uh, because it is very specific, but the thing that you do with this is only possible with these items i mean there are a couple other ways you technically could do it but they'd be a lot more complicated um and the reason why it's possible is that these items function in a different way than everything else uh when you place them down on something the thing you place them down on does not support them uh so and out of all these items by the way the nasty looking filing cabinets in the back are the only in-game items of it. The rest are Atom Shop slash Scoreboard. But anyway, this office desk is a normal item. And normally, when you place an item down on something, it gets its support from the item you place it on. So if you pick that up and move it around, uh, it'll come with it. Now, these items don't do that. They float. So you can actually move the item that they're sitting on out from underneath them. And this allows you to float items very easily. Um, and at first, it might be kind of confusing why this would be useful. Uh, why would you want your items to be floating? Well, there's actually a lot of things you can do. But one of the things that I like to do with them is build inside destroyed prefabs. And so the first thing you do is you kind of make like this... Uh, platform of things that are the, about the same height and then you can place a rug down on something that's slightly higher to make sure it's on the right one and then you have a rug sitting on the filing cabinet when you drop merge it down the rug will go down so it looks like the filing cabinet is sitting on the rug but the rug is still being supported by the filing cabinet you can then make a floor out of rugs all supported by the filing cabinet and place them inside the prefab. When you destroy the prefab, rather than disappearing like we showed with the flame trap, you know how items sitting on top of a destroyed item disappear? The items do not disappear because the filing cabinet is not supported by the prefab. It's just floating. So you can build inside a destroyed prefab, and the reason why you would want to do that is a lot of times the destroyed prefab has a much cooler texture, and even looks completely different uh, like that red rocket I showed earlier um, and just so you know you cannot place any item down inside a prefab that's already destroyed because it says you can't place it on items that are in disrepair 
This is another example of that. And you may notice as we're going through this list that my examples are actually using items that are already on the list, which is kind of one of the ways I determined the ranking of how important these items were. Rugs seem simple, but I'm using them all the time. The pressure plate, simple. You use it all the time. Uh, but this is, again, the same exact thing. We have a platform of rugs that's all supported by this uh, mob, uh, modular sofa. And then when you place it inside this train prefab, uh, once it's placed down, that sofa is floating. Like we could move the prefab in the chair and the rug would still be there. Which means that when we destroy the prefab, the chair and the rug will still be there. Uh, which allows us to build and decorate inside this train car when it, when it's destroyed and the the destroyed texture of the train car is so cool if you look there's this massive hole in the side of it um and i actually have a video on this if you want to see the finished product of this build uh, i'll link that in the description so that is the floating group again these are all atom shop and scoreboard with the exception of the dirty filing cabinets which are a very basic plan so you shouldn't have a problem getting those and you can do all of what I just showed with just those filing cabinets. Number eight are the vines, uh, which are an Atom Shop item as well. Now, vines you can use as an alternate way to make uh, place anywhere blueprint walls, which Vapid Valentine shows in this video. And you should check out this video because it's an amazing build, one of the best that I've seen done. Um, but. Also, another thing that you can do with walls is you can space foundations apart by exactly one wall in width. And um, this, is a, this is a useful thing to do when you're trying to make triple walls, which yes, people do. Um, I actually do in one of my builds, but it was before I discovered this method. Vines existed, by the way, when I did it, but I didn't know how, I didn't know that yet. But you can use triple walls to make shoji walls and Tudor style walls and um, other walls. Uh, and then, you know, if you make them all doorways, you can move this out and then you can double wall it or at this point, triple wall it to get uh, wallpaper on both sides. And then once it is um, all doorways, you can put that stuff back. But this is the only way that I know to easily snap a wall over by exactly a wall and width which allows you to have these exactly lined up rather than just eyeballed in um, which will make your building a lot more squared up and better looking and it won't look like the house i live in which was made 200 years ago i guess they didn't have levels back then i don't know number nine and 9.5 are the vault prototype generator and the solar panel now, the solar panel is much worse, uh, but it is an in-game item, whereas the small vault tech generator is an atom shop item. So that uh, that did that was enough to get the solar panel on the list, but the vault tech generator is better. The reason why these are on the list is they provide power, which is essential for lighting your camps, but they're they don't belch out black square smoke, and most importantly, they don't make this horrific 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 noise. Now, noise does attract beasts, and they come and destroy your stuff. Um, but mostly, the worst part is the black square smoke, which they haven't fixed since day one of the game. So, once I delete this, you can hear that silence. Isn't that golden? Um, but of course, the vault -Tech generator is much better because it's smaller, and it's compact, and you can actually fit it inside a lot of stash boxes to hide it completely you can also hide it in the roof eaves you can also hide it in your butt but the scavenge solar panel you do get it from the daily ops so it is a very easy item to obtain um but uh you know it's it's uh it's a lot bigger and you can put the generator on a shelf and you can also as i mentioned hide it in uh stash boxes and whatever you want um, and I know these are both on the list, but of the two, uh, you know, I would definitely say the vault -Tec Generator is much better. So just get this one. The solar panel is kind of an honorable mention. Now, there's three more things on the essential items that are actually not actually items, but they're objects or things 
that are essential to camp building. Um, and they're kind of in this special category on their own. So these are ranked not the top or the bottom 10, but these are their own thing. So the first one is the camp module itself. Number one, it does determine the spawn location for you and your teammates or anybody else that visits your camp. And if you move it around, you will find that the spawn location changes. Uh, and people will spawn to the northwest of wherever you place this. So if people are getting stuck in foundations, you can move that and they will do it. The second thing it does is you can actually float items on top of it. By placing an item on top of the module, you essentially turn every item into the floating group. Um, but it is a lot harder to get those exactly where you want them. Uh, so it's harder to do the thing that I showed earlier with uh, the destroyed prefabs. It is possible, but it's way harder. Um, and lastly, you can do the reverse merge, which again is covered in Nuka Violet's merge video, um, which you should check out. Um, but the reverse merge is a really great thing because it's the only way to do the opposite of merging and get those items to go up rather than down. And ironically, that's what you're doing. You're getting the bottom item to go down rather than up. But that's neither here nor there. Number two on the special category, and also, I guess, number 11 on the actual list, is power armor. Power armor is an item you can use for camp building because it allows you to float items again. And uh, so this is something not a lot of people know, actually, and uh, not a lot of people use this, actually, either. Um, but you can actually float items by placing them on power armor, and then you can get rid of the power armor, and the items stay. So this is a really good if you want to have some levitating items, and you don't want to do a reverse merge to have them up there. Um, and I actually forget about this all the time, and I don't think to use it myself. But it's a very helpful tool. And you can just use a chassis, you don't need the actual whole power armor, but it's very cool. Now lastly, of the essential uh, objects or items, is Sinky Dirt. Yes, Sinky Dirt is the OG way of merging that people probably found out on accident. But what happens is there's overlapping terrain, so it usually happens near big trees, near roads, and near boulders. So the item will sink down to the bottom terrain, and when you place it, it pops up to the top terrain. And so that's basically what's happening with the button, you know, where the depressed button is the bottom terrain and the undepressed button space is the, uh, you know, top terrain. <clears throat> so that pops the bottom item up by that increment. Sinky Dirt can be useful because you can change the increments of how much you're merging, whereas the pressure plate is the same increment each time. You can also merge greater chunks at a time depending on the Sinky Dirt, and all Sinky Dirt is different because it depends on the terrain that's below it, how much it's going to be popping up. So that is the 12 essential camp items, and now I want to show six items that are not essential, but that I would count as very valuable to me, very useful. I use them a lot, and uh, I recommend them if you're looking to improve your toolkit. Number one is the brambles. Now, the brambles were added a long time ago, and they do come and go. I don't see them very often, but they're just one of the best tools for uh, blending your structure into the environment. Unfortunately, a lot of the trees that you can get in the atom shop, they actually bulldoze all the grass around it, which is like the opposite of what you're wanting to do, right, if you're building foliage. Um, and also a lot of uh, foundations, when you place them down, also bulldoze grass. Uh, so this kind of lets you reclaim that overgrown look. Um, it's a really nice blending tool, and if you're building in immersive or scrappy style, you can't go wrong with some brambles and grass that really ties it in. Number two is the Ranch House Kit. Now, this is a building kit from the Atom Shop once again, and this is the only clean drywall. Uh, there's a dirty drywall now as well, but this one is the only clean drywall 
that is in the game for for ceilings i i mean so um before this set was added all there was was rafters um for this for roofs and so uh this really changes interior design uh number three is the rest in pieces building kit and this one is for this flat roof for one thing see how it has these end caps uh and for comparison this roof piece doesn't have end caps on it so it has like that thin lip and um the rest in pieces does have end caps as you can see it's square all the way around and it also has the best floor texture that any roof has so those two reasons make it exceptional for making roof floors which a lot of times people do use roofs for floors because they're more forgiving to work with than upper floors which require support number four is the junk wall set and uh this i believe comes in the junkyard bundle i don't know if they've ever sold it by itself uh, it is an atom shop item and it has four different uh variants first of all it's very forgiving when you place it in terrain it sinks down very well so a lot of items will pop up and float these they work very well with existing terrain and so they're very easy to work with and make really nice immersive scrappy areas whether it's raider scavenger style or whatever you want to have they're really great for post-apocalyptic vibes something else you can do with them is you can actually expand the texture of your uh building itself by using the flame trap to destroy it and then placing a wall through the destroyed one uh junk wall and then uh, repairing that and you have like a really cool blended texture there so i definitely recommend this if you're if you don't have it already number five is the perimeter wall now this actually comes in a set of defensive items that you get for defending a workshop for the very first time it's an in-game plan super easy to get guaranteed drop and what you can use it for is to make uh place anywhere walls if you don't have the catwalks or the vines to make the blueprints that i've um, referenced before so this is an easy way to get free place basically uh floating walls in without needing support and lastly, the pit scaffolding, which is an atom shop item as well. And this is a nice set because you can do what we just did with walls, but this time with stairs. So if you ever need to get a floating stair in, and again, maybe you have these, but for some reason don't have the catwalks yet, uh, you can get your, your stairs in. It's a little harder to get them in exactly where you want them, but you can remove the scaffolding and leave the stairs behind so that concludes my six useful items and the 12 essential items if i forgot any please let me know uh in the comments below and let me know what your favorite items to build with as well if you learned something from this video consider liking and subscribing it really helps me out as i try to grow my channel and Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. I really couldn't have done this all without you and without your undying love. Uh, if you guys aren't in the Discord, join in there. It's a great fun, and I'll see you guys in the next video.